On day one, I spawned in as a baby sandworm with my older brother, Mordecai. Suddenly, the wall of our home exploded. Max, you have to find the treasure. The raiders and wolf clan are coming for me. Treasure? What are you talking about? What's going on? Out of nowhere, humans ran into our home and began to attack us with tons of explosives. Mordecai tried to protect me, but the explosions killed him in a single blow. No! I dug up to the surface and discovered the raiders were waiting in cars. Get the little sandworm. We can't let him get that treasure. They began to chase me with their cars and fired guns at me. I only had five hearts, so I knew they were too strong for me. I ran for my life. As a sandworm, I had the ability to burrow, so I dug tunnels as fast as I could to try and escape the onslaught of vehicles. They can't catch up now. Suddenly, I encountered a wall of obsidian in my way. Oh no, I can't dig through that. The raiders soon arrived and blew up the wall to reveal my hiding spot. End of the line, worm. No, I can't die here. Just then, I used a magical sand attack, causing the raider to float back towards the surface. Ah, sand in my eyes. I took the chance to dig straight down as fast as I could, but before I knew it, I was falling straight into a lava pit. Ah! On day two, I was plummeting towards the lava below. I thought fast and used the materials I had dug up during the chase to place down a block before I hit the lava. Ooh, that was close. I looked around and realized I had dug straight into a mysterious cavern with a pyramid inside. What is this place? Just then, I heard footsteps approaching, so I ran inside of the pyramid to hide. I don't think they'll find me here. I carefully looked around the pyramid and discovered a strange artifact floating on a pedestal. It looked important, so I picked it up for safekeeping. Whoa, is this related to the treasure? Suddenly, I heard growling behind me. I turned around and found a massive wolf staring me down. I am Hugo, the leader of the wolf bounty hunters. Hand over the artifact. No way. Then we'll take it by force. The wolf lunged at me, leaving me no other choice but to fight. Hugo was very large and had powerful jaws to boot. I had to be careful not to get hurt too much, otherwise I was finished. I used my magical sand attack to make him levitate up into the air and drop him back down for fall damage. Unfortunately, my attacks just weren't doing enough damage. Despite my efforts, the wolf was just too powerful for me. I burrowed into the ground to try and escape him. Unfortunately for me, he kept following me. The wolf leader was hot on my tail. He's too fast! I'm not gonna make it! I was about to get caught by Hugo, so I knew I had to try something quick. I began to dig above my head until I spotted lava slowly beginning to creep down towards me. Bingo! I moved out of the way of the lava, and it poured down in front of the wolf before he could catch up. I'll be back with my pack to capture you and that artifact. I managed to escape with my life, but now I was in the middle of a crazy treasure hunt between the raiders and the wolf clan. What does this treasure even do? Just then, the artifact began to shake. Ah! I threw it on the ground, and a tiny entity appeared from it. Ah! Please don't kill me! Why would I kill you? My name is Gaia. I heard you were seeking the treasure. Uh, sort of. What is this treasure anyways? The treasure is thought to reside in a wonderful oasis, surrounded by light and water. The entity who's lucky enough to find it will be granted a single wish. A wish? That means I could bring my brother back to life. Can you take me to it? Well, unfortunately, I don't know where it is, but I have a clue. In order to complete the map, you must travel to the six desert monuments. The first one is located inside of the Badlands. Then I know my next mission. On days four through seven, I begin to head towards the Badlands when suddenly I dug straight into a wall of TNT. What the? It's a trap! It was too late to run. I got blown up by the TNT and survived with only half a heart. Ouch! What was that? I noticed a letter in the wreckage and picked it up. If you're still alive to read this, surrender now or us raiders will come finish the job. The treasure will be ours. Sheesh! The wolves and raiders aren't messing around. I knew I was going to need shelter if I wanted to survive their attacks, so I began searching for a good spot to start. Once I found where I wanted to build, I began to dig a tunnel system that led to multiple different rooms. Each room was going to have its own use. I made one into a furnace room, one into a treasure room, and the last one into my own bedroom. This will protect me from those clans. After finishing up the base, I searched for some food. I killed a few cows for their meat and cooked it up in my furnace room. As I finished up cooking, I heard an explosion come from above ground. What was that? On days 8 through 12, I dug to the surface to find the place covered in flames. The raiders must be destroying everything in search of something. I noticed a trail of fire they left in their path and decided to follow it for more information. 
When I got to the end, I discovered they had led me straight to the first desert monument, the Sphinx. They must be after the first map piece. I knew I couldn't take them on as a baby, so I stealthed over to the entrance of the monument. Unfortunately, just as I thought I was in the clear, a raider spotted me. There's the worm, get him! I quickly tried to open the door to the monument, but it was locked. Ugh, let me in! Why yes, little sandworm. I looked up and realized the Sphinx talked. If you would like to get inside, you must answer my riddle. I don't have time for that! Those guys want to kill me! Just then, the raiders looked dynamite at the Sphinx, blowing up the entrance. Ow! Oh. I ran past the raiders through the hole in the wall and spotted the map waiting for me inside. I quickly ran towards it and snagged it before those pesky raiders had the chance. Nice! Suddenly, I had a strange sensation inside of me. I changed color and my teeth became sharper. My body grew longer and I felt more powerful. I was now an adult sandworm with 10 hearts. Whoa! I wonder what else I can do as an adult. Just then, the raiders came running towards me, but this time I wasn't running. I jumped into battle. The raiders all swarmed me with their blades and tried to overwhelm me with their numbers, but they didn't expect my newfound strength. In my new form, I was able to use a sandworm gauntlet which allowed me to stick out my tongue and bite the raiders one by one. If too many opponents were surrounding me, I used my magical sand blaster to make them levitate into the air and buy me some time. With the combination of my two powerful abilities, I was beginning to get an edge. We went back and forth, but I managed to take out the raider goons. One map piece down, five more to go. Not so fast. Just then, the leader of the raiders emerged. Well, well, well. Looks like the baby sandworm is all grown up. That's right, so you better back off. You may have defeated my men, but I'm Rusty, leader of the raiders. Now hand over the map. Rusty charged at me with all of his might and we clashed. He shot at me with all kinds of crazy guns and tossed grenades all over the place. He was super strong. The longer we fought, the sooner I realized just how much stronger he was than his goons. At this rate, I was definitely going to lose. Let's end this with a bit of fireworks. Rusty placed down a block of powerful looking TNT and rode away on his motorbike. I don't want to stick around for that thing. I quickly began to burrow away. Thankfully, as an adult, I could dig even faster than before. With my new speed, I managed to escape the Sphinx and I watched as the monument exploded behind me. Mm -hmm. He's tough. I gotta be careful. I took my map piece prize and burrowed away once again. As I was digging, I suddenly dug into a wolf clan den. Wolves were asleep all around me. That could have been bad, but I wonder what sort of intel they have here. I stooped around the wolf den, being careful not to wake anyone and discovered a strange letter. The next map piece is concealed with gold. What does that mean? Just then, one of the wolves woke up. Intruder! Ah! I burrowed away to escape before they could catch up. On days 16 through 19, I managed to narrowly escape the wolf clan and return back to my base to regroup. I better prepare to search for the next monument. I started by crafting some iron armor to make myself more sturdy for any future encounters. Next, I made a room full of cows so I would have all the meat I could dream of. After that, I expanded the base to have more rooms, including a room specifically for Gaia to enjoy. Thank you! This is lovely! Although, I'm not sure why I need it if I live in this artifact. Eh, it's good to stretch your legs sometimes. Gaia went back into her artifact when suddenly a wolf entered my base. I found you. We'll be taking that artifact now. The goon ran in and snatched Gaia and I quickly chased behind them. You come back here. I was in pursuit of Gaia's wolf captor, but they were too quick for me to keep up. I eventually got thrown off their tail. No, I have to find them, no matter what. I dug and dug in search of any sign of my friend when I stumbled upon a pile of bones. They must be close. I followed the trail until arriving at a massive prison. Standing guard in front of the gates was a terrifying guard wolf. I would hate to alert that guy. I'm gonna have to dig around them. I dug beneath the walls of the prison and popped out on the other side. There, I spotted Gaia's artifact locked inside of a cage. Don't worry, Gaia, I'll break you out. Just then, Hugo emerged from the platform above. It seems we have an intruder. Guards, kill that worm. Desert wolves rushed towards me with the intent to kill. They had a really strong bite, but luckily with my sandblast power, I was able to keep them away from me so I didn't get swarmed. With this strategy, I was able to slowly take them out one by one using my tongue. I managed to take down the pack of rabid wolves, but the horrifying guard came for me next. He was not like the other wolves. 
His strength was unmatched, and every hit he would land dealt massive damage. His massive jaws gnashed at me, and I fought back with my powers, but I knew they were too strong for me in my current form. I hit him with my sandblast power over and over, making him rise up higher and higher into the air. Please let me down! You asked for it! I dropped him down onto the ground, but the fall damage still wasn't enough to weaken him. At this rate, I was gonna lose, so I decided to set my sights on Gaia instead. I broke through the bars of the cage and smashed her artifact free from the case. With Gaia safe in my grasp, I burrowed away to safety. You can't run forever! On days 24 through 27, now that Gaia was safe, I decided to search for the next monument. The clue I read said something about being concealed in gold. Do you have any ideas? Not sure. I do remember something about a golden scarab, though. Suddenly, a dirt bike zoomed by in the distance. That must be the raiders. Let's see what they're up to. Gaia returned to her artifact, and I followed behind the dirt bike. Eventually, we arrived at a dig site with the tip of a pyramid peeking through. Oh no! They found it! We better get inside before they do. I dove into the ground and emerged on the other side to find a giant ancient pyramid waiting. Wow, it's beautiful. I moved in deeper and discovered a pharaoh sitting at his throne. I approached him cautiously, and he suddenly spoke. Greetings, traveler. If it is treasure you seek, we must first find my missing golden scarab. How do I do that? The pharaoh tossed over an ancient axe. Use this to capture it, but be warned, you must weaken him first. You got it! On days 28 through 31, I began to search the massive pyramid for the lost golden scarab. Oh, little scarab, where are you? Just then, a giant golden scarab emerged out of nowhere. You're not little. The monstrous bug attacked me. The scarab was quick on its feet and had the ability to launch flaming projectiles at me. I had to be careful not to get caught up in all of the fire he would leave behind. Otherwise, the burn damage would overtake me. I went in close with my ancient axe to try and deal some damage up close, but it was hard to hit the squirmy bug. I switched to my sandblaster to make the scarab unable to run and took the opportunity to smash him down once again with my axe. I did this over and over again until finally the golden scarab grew weaker. After a long battle, I used the ancient axe I had received from the pharaoh to finally finish off the bug. It suddenly transformed into a little scarab amulet. I better take this back to the pharaoh. I returned the amulet to him and he was overjoyed. As promised, here is your prize. The pharaoh tossed over the map piece, but before I could pick it up, a bulldozer came flying down from above and crushed the pharaoh. Oh my gosh! I'll be taking that. <laughs> hey, I earned that fair and square. Sometimes life ain't fair. Now prepare to die, you good-for-nothing worm. Rusty charged me with the bulldozer, giving me no choice but to retreat. Ah! On days 32 through 35, I was being chased by Rusty in a bulldozer. Normally, I would burrow away, but he was able to mow through blocks, making it hard to escape him. Come on, Max, think! I began running towards the wall and made a sharp turn to throw him off my tail. He crashed into the wall, but the bulldozer didn't stop. You think that's gonna stop me? I knew he was still close behind, but my little diversion did buy me some time. I better set up a trap. I quickly burrowed underground and weakened the strength of the ground by creating a massive hole. Once I was done, I climbed back up and tried to lure him in. Hey, come and get me! There you are. Rusty charged full speed ahead and fell right into my trap. Rusty dropped the map piece on the way down, and I snatched it for safekeeping. One step closer towards the wish. Suddenly, Rusty's crew arrived. Hey, boss, you down there? Yes, get me out of here and kill that worm. You got it. The raiders started to blast away at me, so I dove into the ground and ran away. On days 36 through 39, I arrived back at my base to find a Stymphalian bird waiting there for me. Excuse me? My name is Stephanie. I'm a friend of your brother's. Do you know where he is? Uh, how do you know him? Well, let's just say that the early bird didn't just catch the worm. I got his heart, too. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, but Mordecai died trying to protect me. Oh, that's a lot to process. I'm gonna bring him back, though. We just gotta find that treasure. Whoa, that is even more a process. I'd be happy to help you find the treasure if it'll bring him back. But first, we're gonna need a place for planning. You got it. I got to work building us a strategy room with a table to place map pieces on. Once it was done, I showed it to Stephanie and left her to her own devices. While she was working, I got to work expanding the base even further. I planted a wheat farm for myself near the cows, so I would have a full selection of foods to choose from. Once that was finished, I went to check on Stephanie to see if she had any leads. I'm sorry to say, I can't think without a nice tall glass of cactus juice. 
really? But... If you want the third monument's location, you're gonna have to get me that juice! Ugh, fine. On days 40 through 42, I went searching for cactus juice. I found an area full of huge cacti and got to work knocking down cacti left and right. I tried to collect their juice, but they were all dry. What the heck? I spotted a weird looking little cactus and went to investigate. I smacked it and it screamed in pain. <laughs> Oh no! I'm so sorry! Suddenly, a massive cactus monster dropped down from above. Hey, who's messing with my babies? She charged at me and attacked, but I didn't want to hurt her. She shot her spikes at me, and I evaded to the best of my abilities. No, please! I just wanted cactus juice! Cactus juice? You're not gonna find any here! The raiders have dried us all out! Huh, is there anything I can do to help you? You could bring us water, but the only water nearby is a reservoir deep underground. Don't worry, I got this. I set out to find the area, and when I finally got there, I found one cube of water sitting there by itself. Uh, that's it? I dug down beneath the block of water and fell into a massive pool. Oh no, I'm not a good swimmer. If I didn't get out of there, I was gonna drown. Instead of trying to swim, I floated down to the bottom of the pool and dug down. I put some blocks above me and the water drained out. Phew, that was a close one. I dug my way back around to the top of the pool and started filling bottles of water to take back to the cacti. I returned to the surface and handed the bottles over to the mama. Thank you so much! Here, take this as a token of my gratitude. Oh. She handed over some cactus juice and a sweet thorn shooter. All in a day's work, citizen. With that, I headed back to Stephanie. Time to figure out where the next monument is. On days 43 through 46, I gave Stephanie her go-go juice and she chugged it down. <gasps> Brain blast! I just remembered something. I saw this crazy tomb when I was flying around. Here, let me make you a map of where it is. She tossed over the map and I set out immediately. I arrived at the monument to find it surprisingly quiet. I slithered inside and suddenly a wall of obsidian appeared behind me, blocking the exit. The place is booby trapped? Just then, a ghost flew up from below. Whoa, what do you want? You have entered the cursed tomb, and now you will face the consequences. Ah! I ran away as fast as I could, and eventually I lost the ghost. Down below, I spotted an obsidian glass pane with a map piece inside. In order to open the case, you must present the ancient dungeon key. I knew breaking the obsidian would be impossible, so I ventured deeper into the mysterious tomb. I don't know what's in here, but you're going down. On days 47 through 50, I was traversing through the tomb and different freaky mobs were spawning left and right. Man, this place is super haunted. I didn't have time to fight them, so I just kept doing my best to run past them all. It seemed like this place was never ending and there was no sign of the key anywhere. Finally, I reached the deepest room in the tomb and spotted a shiny treasure block. Huh, I guess that's the thing they wanted? I went up and grabbed it, but suddenly a jade golem appeared. Hey, that's mine, obviously. The golem charged at me and I was forced to fight it. It started pummeling me with its fists and it was super strong. Luckily, I had grown pretty strong too. As I was fighting the golem off, I also made sure I was doing my best to avoid falling into the spike traps littered around us. Eventually, I overpowered the golem and was able to take it out. Sorry! Suddenly, a whole new path opened up. I ran inside and it was the treasure room. I quickly grabbed the key and also ran around to collect whatever other loot was there. Awesome! Now back to the beginning. On days 51 through 53, I returned to the obsidian case. I presented the key and the case vanished before my eyes. I was about to grab it when suddenly Hugo appeared. Thanks for opening it for me, fool. Hugo ran up and snatched the map. Oh no, I really messed up this time. Suddenly the lights started to change and a massive pharaoh mummy appeared. Hey, you set off a booby trap. Hugo was gone, so I had no choice but to fight the monster by myself. I charged at the towering mummy and smashed at him with my ancient axe. If he got too close, his powerful fist would deal massive damage. Luckily, I had my sandblaster to stall him while I healed up with some food. The longer the fight went on, the sooner I realized I was better off keeping my distance from his melee attacks. I fired at him with my thorn shooter and dwindled down his health more and more. Even with all of my strength, the fight wasn't going well. He was gonna beat me. Just when I thought all hope was lost, I started to transform. My body changed into a different color, and I was much stronger. In my new form, I had 10 more hearts. I finished off the pharaoh mummy easily and ran off to pursue Hugo. He had a head start on me. Luckily, with my new form, I was able to dig through the walls of the tomb. I dug all the way out, but it was too late. He was too far ahead of me to catch up. 
Oh no! Did I lose the map piece? Out of nowhere, ghouls from the cursed tomb appeared and started attacking Hugo. While he was fighting them off, he dropped his map piece. <gasps> That was my chance. I went up and snagged the map piece and slithered away while he was distracted. On days 54 through 57, I returned to the base and added the new map piece to the planning room. One step closer to bringing my brother back to life. After that, I got to work expanding the base. First, I worked on a training room. I was gonna have to keep improving my skills and it would be the perfect place to do so. Next, I built another room since you never know when more guests are gonna need to take refuge. Finally, I built a memorial for my brother. With that, my base had seen a major upgrade. I miss you, big bro. I'm not gonna stop until I get you back. Once that was finished, I went to talk to Gaia. Hey, Gaia, any leads on another monument? Well, the next monument that I can remember is drenched in water. Water? Suddenly, a hole in the ceiling broke open and water started pouring in. What the? My house has sprung a leak. It happens. No, it doesn't. We're in a desert. I quickly filled the hole before the place got flooded and went to the surface to investigate. What I discovered was the cactus mama from earlier. Oh, hey, no, I've been looking for you. I, look, I need your help. What's wrong? My little baby's in trouble. The raiders used the machinery to make a watering hole and my baby is stuck in it. On days 58 through 60, I arrived at the giant watering hole and I spotted the cactoid drowning. I immediately jumped in after the little dude. Ah! I hate swimming! Being a sandworm, I wasn't the best swimmer, but I couldn't let a little baby cactus drown. I kept at it, but I started to sink. Ugh, I have to move faster, otherwise I won't make it! Ugh. I pushed myself so hard that I started learning how to swim. Huh, I think I'm getting the hang of this. I started swimming faster, and I was able to push the baby back to the edge and up onto the shore. Oh my gosh, oh thank you, thank you! All in a day's work, man. Suddenly, I felt myself getting sucked underwater. I looked down and realized a raider had placed magma blocks below me. <laughs> Good luck surviving this one. Even with my new swimming ability, I wasn't strong enough to fight this current. I was sucked down below and passed down. On days 61 through 64, I woke up on the shore of a beach. I was alive. Ah, sweet sand. I love you. I don't see visitors around here often. Oh, hello. I realized I had landed right in front of the next monument. Whoa, those raiders accidentally led me right where I was trying to go. Yes, I know what you seek, and I only ask one favor of you in return. Anything. What do you need? Scratch my foot. Pardon? Scratch my foot. This itch has plagued me for a millennia. I have lost my ability to move, but I can still feel. Dig down towards my feet and eliminate whatever is causing this unrelenting itch. And in return, you'll give me the map piece? Correct. Okay, I'll do it. I jumped down into the ocean and started digging. I was making good headway, but I ran out of breath and had to swim back up. Hurry, it's getting worse. I'm trying. I can't breathe underwater. Here, use this. Moai dropped me a potion of water breathing. Suddenly, Rusty emerged from the depths in a fully functional submarine. Move it or lose it, worm. That map piece is mine. He swam right past me and blew open a hole to the bottom. No! He's gonna get down there first! I chased after him as fast as I could. On days 65 through 67, I swam beneath the water to discover a massive cavern where Moai's body was. Whoa! This guy is massive! Just then, out of the corner of my eye, I spotted something sparkling. I swam over to check it out and discovered it was a dolphin's grace potion. Don't mind if I do. I chugged it down, granting me dolphin's grace. This should hold me off for a while. I continued pursuing Rusty until I reached the bottom of the ocean. There, I spotted his submarine. I got you now. I swam over and realized the submarine was empty. Oh no, where'd he go? I couldn't let the raider get away, so I searched the area for any clues of his whereabouts. As I searched, I didn't see any signs of Rusty, but instead, I found a bunch of little parasites squirming around. These guys must be part of the itching problem. I got to work taking out each parasite one by one. I had grown so strong that the little pests didn't stand a chance. After a while, I eliminated all of them. <laughs> there we go. Surely that cured the itch. Suddenly, the area began to shake. My foot still itches. Huh, there must still be something down here. 
Just then, I spotted Rusty entering the lower part of the cave system. There you are! Get back here! On days 68 through 71, I followed Rusty into the depths of the statue's cave. Luckily, the lower depths were drained of water. Once I arrived, I quickly found the bottom of the Moai statue. Okay, there's his feet, but where's the monster causing the itch? Suddenly, I saw Rusty running away as fast as he could. Ah, I wanna live! I looked over and realized he was on the run from a horrible monster. There's the culprit! It's go time! I ran in and began to fight it out with the monster. He was surprisingly strong and had the ability to drop meteors from the sky above us. I had to be careful not to get hit too much, otherwise I was finished. I used my sandblaster to make the beast levitate and unable to move. When he was stuck, I dragged him towards me with my sandworm gauntlet and slashed him down with my ancient axe. Even with my powerful attacks, the monster wouldn't give in. He continued his onslaught, bringing me to the verge of death. I had to make some distance between us and shoot him down with my thorn shooter. After a close fight, I managed to defeat the monster. Upon its death, it dropped a meteorite staff. Perfect! Now to check in on Moai. With my new weapon, I returned to Moai in hopes that his issue was fixed. Max, my itch is finally gone. You did it! Take this as promised. Moai gave me the map piece, and I felt a strange sensation inside of me. My body once again changed color, and I gained five hearts. Woohoo! Suddenly, Rusty appeared on a boat. You didn't die to that monster? Then here's plan B. Brah. He began to fire at me with a flurry of bullets. I took out my meteorite staff and tried it out. It caused meteorites to land on his head. You can do that? I'll be back to get those map pieces soon enough. With my mission finally completed, I began to travel back to my base. On days 72 through 76, I was heading back to my base when I discovered the remains of my old house. Mordecai, my older brother, I miss you so much. I can't believe the raiders took you away like that. I have to get that treasure, no matter what. Suddenly, I spotted a note lying in the rubble. What's that? I picked up the letter and began to read. Dear little bro, I've been wanting to take you to a secret location for a while now. When we have the time, let's go together. Mordecai, a secret? I have to find out what he wanted to show me. The only person who knew Mordecai as well as me was Stephanie, so I headed back to the base to see what she thought of all this. When I arrived, I handed her the letter and filled her in. I think I can find the spot, but I'll need some time. No problem. While Stephanie was busy with the letter, I decided to give the base some TLC. I started by digging a new tunnel deeper into the ground and carved out a large room. I filled the place with everything a social lounge would need. This included food, drinks, seats to relax in, and even a stage for people to sing and perform on. I finished it off with a small swimming pool for everyone to enjoy. This is gonna be the hottest place in the desert! Just as I was finishing up, Stephanie walked in. I cracked the code! Take this! She tossed over a map leading to a secret spot my brother wanted to take me to. Thanks, Steph! Time to get some answers! On days 77 through 80, I arrived at a strange location in the desert, and I was confused. Why would Mordecai want to bring me here? I was looking around in confusion when suddenly my brother appeared before me. Mordecai? Wait, aren't you dead? And you're green, like me. I'm speaking to you from the astral plane, where we can be whatever we want to be. I've missed you, bro. You've really shown those guys who the better treasure hunter is. I'm sorry you died protecting me, but I promise once I get the treasure, I'll use my wish to bring you back. If anyone can do it, I know it's you, Max. I have a clue that can help you on your quest. Just east of this location is the next monument. You can't miss it. Whoa, thanks Mordecai. I promise I won't let you down. Just then, Hugo came running out of nowhere and destroyed the vision of Mordecai. East of here, huh? That map piece is as good as mine. Guard! The guard from the prison emerged and growled at me. I was faced with the same difficult foe I had run from at the prison. I was stronger now, though, and I charged in bravely. His bite was as strong as ever, but I had gotten pretty tough. I used my sandblaster to hold him up in the air, and my cactus shooter to slowly wear him down. When that wasn't tough enough for him, I started raining meteors down upon him from above. He was tough, but I was much stronger than the last time we met. This time, I had the upper hand, and eventually, I was able to take him out. No time to celebrate! I immediately took off towards the monument to try and catch up to Hugo. On days 81 through 84, I arrived at the next monument. 
It was a whole world of lush green and beautiful plants unlike anything I had ever seen and cascaded down from above. Whoa, I've never seen so much plant life in a desert before. I tried to continue into the gardens, but I was stopped by a gargoyle guard. Nah, uh, uh. I'm not letting more of those no good wolf clan folks in here. I'm not part of the wolf clan. I'm trying to stop them. Likely story. You'll have to prove it. But I'm not a wolf. That's not enough. Find my lost plant friend, Bobby, to earn my trust. You can't miss him. I do, though. I miss him a lot. A plant? Uh, okay. I searched around the monument for anything that looked like a Bobby. Eventually, I spotted a derpy little flower guy checking out a weird pomegranate on the ground. Uh, are you Bobby? Eep! The little dude ran away and climbed up into a nearby tree. No, wait! I'm trying to help! Bobby wouldn't come down, so I grabbed the pomegranate off of the ground. Do you want this? <laughs> Bobby cautiously climbed down from the tree and I handed him the pomegranate. But instead of eating it, he threw it and it exploded. What? <laughs> Bobby! I chased him around while he threw pomegranates all over the place, blowing everything up. Eventually, I caught him and took the fruit back from him. I'll be holding on to this. That's too dangerous for you. I took him back to the gargoyle and he was pleased with me. Not bad. Okay, you can pass. Suddenly, there was howling in the distance. They must be getting close to the map piece. I ran in as quickly as I could find them. I arrived at the top of the Hanging Gardens to find Hugo standing near the map piece. Stand aside! That map is mine! You've been a real pain in my paw, Max. I think it's time I finish you off now. He charged me, and the battle began. Even though the guard was bigger than him, he was still much stronger. He howled and started biting me with his sharp teeth, and I retaliated with my cactus shooter and meteor staff. I fought as hard as I could, but he just kept hitting me. He was too strong. Despite all of my upgrades, he was still too powerful for me. At this rate, I was going to die, and he was going to take the map piece for himself. Just when I thought hope was lost, I remembered I had the pomegranate from Bobby. I hope this works. I tossed the pomegranate, and it exploded right in Hugo's face. Ha ha! I tossed the pomegranates all around, trapping Hugo on a small platform. While he was stuck, I quickly ran in and snatched the map piece. Got it! Suddenly, I felt a new power surge through me. I changed colors once again and grew even stronger. I now had 30 hearts. You'll pay for this. Hugo managed to jump over the gap and land a brutal surprise attack. I was left with only a few hearts. Ah! I was still no match for the Wolf Clan's leader. I escaped the little remaining health I had. Next time I see you, you're dead meat. On days 88 through 90, I returned to the base with the fifth map piece. I only have one more to go. Gaia's artifact began to shake once again, so I placed it down to have a chat. You're so close to reaching the Oasis! I know, it's all thanks to you. Oh, shucks you. You do the hard work, but remember, I'll always have your back. Gaia returned to the amulet and I heard someone inside the base. My cover was blown. Who's there? I rushed towards the source of the noise and discovered it was just a group of mummified cats. Sorry for the scare. Our homes have been destroyed by the raiders and wolf clan. Could we stay here? Of course. I got to work on adding multiple rooms for all of my new residents. I made sure to add a bit of flair so that it was perfect for a cat. Once I was done, the base was feeling a lot more lively. Not too bad. Thanks for everything, Max. Also, I found this letter with your name on it. Please help me with a mission, and I'll reward you with the location of the next monument. Anonymous. I better check this out. On days 91 through 92, I arrived at the meeting spot to find a raider waiting for me. What the? Was this a trap? No, no, no. It's not like that. I need your help. Huh. Why should I believe you? You've caused me nothing but trouble. Because before I left the raiders, I got a hold of the final monument's location. It's on this map. Sounds fishy, but fine. What do you need? I'm all out of gas for my car. Could you find some more for me? I know the raider gas reserve is around here somewhere. Leave it to me. I dove into the ground and began to search for the gasoline reserve. After a lot of searching, I dug myself into a cavern with tons of gasoline barrels lying around. I better be careful. One flame could make this whole place explode. I gathered a can or two for the raider and began to make my way out when I spotted a sleeping fire mob. I can't wake that guy up. I better be quiet. I cautiously slithered by the sleeping mob when suddenly it jolted awake. Uh, nice fire mob? 
I quickly made a run for it. The fire mob unleashed a flame attack and caused the whole place to explode. Luckily, I made it out alive. I returned to the raider and tossed over the gas. Thanks, here's the map as I promised. Sweet, time to get that last map piece. On days 93 through 94, I followed the map to the final monument, Stonehenge. Whoa, this place is crazy. I spotted the final map piece right away, so I began slithering towards it. Suddenly, Rusty came out. I have you now, Sandworm. What? Out of nowhere, a cage of obsidian appeared around me. It was a trap all along. Hey, let me out. Nah, looks like I'll be the one on top now. Rusty used magic to take away my map pieces and claim the final one from the pedestal. Yes, the wish will be mine. No, all of my hard work. Just then, Hugo emerged from hiding. Hand over the map, Raider. No way, I'll die before I give you this map. The two of them battled it out for the map pieces. I need to get out of here before they get away with the map. On days 95 through 96, the two factions were battling it out for the map. I needed to take the opportunity to escape while they were distracted. Dang obsidian, I can't dig through this. As I searched the perimeter of the cage, I noticed a small gap, but I was way too big to fit into it. What now? Suddenly, Gaia's artifacts began to vibrate. I placed it and she came out to help. Don't worry, I got this. Gaia escaped through the gap and began to break down the cage. Once she was done, I managed to escape. Thanks, partner. I dug into the ground and snuck into the heat of the battle. What the? The ground is trembling beneath me. Suddenly, I burst from the floor beneath Rusty's feet and landed a surprise attack. He dropped the map pieces and I took it for myself. Woohoo! I once again changed color and felt my strength grow even more. I now had five hearts. Get that worm! See ya! I used my new form to tunnel away faster than usual and left the wolf in the dust. On days 97 through 98, I returned home with my now completed treasure map. Looks like I have a long journey ahead. I better prepare. I dug around and managed to find some diamonds which I used to craft some new armor. Next, I gathered up some extra food to keep myself healthy on the journey. Once I was done, I put the finishing touches on the base, building a set of rooms for anyone seeking refuge, and I built my brother a room. I'll see you soon, Mordecai. We'll be together again in no time. With that, my underground sand farm was finally complete. This place is looking good. Later in the day, Stephanie came up to me. Hey, Max, come here. We have a surprise for you. I followed her down to our social room and realized all of my residents had thrown me a party. Oh, you guys shouldn't have. Before going on the journey ahead, I took the chance to unwind a little bit. I enjoyed cake with everyone and had some good conversations. All right, now that I'm refreshed, it's time to head to the Oasis. On day 99, I arrived at the Oasis. The place was breathtaking and even more magical than I could have imagined. This is incredible. I explored the wonders of the Oasis. After a while, I finally arrived at the treasure which seemed to be locked inside of a chest. How am I gonna open this? Suddenly, my map transformed into a key. Oh, so that's how. Here we go. Not so fast. Out of nowhere, Rusty appeared in a mech. How did you get here without a map? I followed you here, you fool, and now I'm taking the key. The raider leader charged in with his guns blazing. Rusty threw grenades at me to try and blow me off the peak of the oasis. His arsenal of weapons were much bigger than before. He was not only able to fire his guns at me, but also shoot scorching lasers from his brand new mech. I retaliated with my thorn shooter, but the armor from his mech took my attacks like nothing. I switched to my sand blaster to try and give myself a chance to land some clean hits. Next, I used my meteor staff and ancient axe to dwindle down his health more and more. As the fight continued, I was beginning to overpower Rusty. I kept giving it everything I had. Nothing was gonna stop me from saving my brother. The battle was fierce, but I overcame the strength of his mechanical weapon. Woohoo! The raiders are no more! Little did I know, the battle wasn't over yet. Hugo jumped out of nowhere. Perfect! Now the Wolf Clan will rise! On day 100, Hugo, leader of the Wolf Clan, stood between me and my treasure prize. Out of my way, flea bag! Someone is confident. Remember, I bested you every time we've met before. I'm not letting you get that treasure! I'm bringing my brother back! <laughs> How optimistic! We'll see if you can stand up to me after I use this! Hugo threw a splash potion at his feet, causing him to grow larger than before. He charged at me full speed with the intent to finish this once and for all. I started with my meteor staff to deal massive damage, but Hugo was able to take the hits like it was nothing. He was already a powerful foe, but now in his larger form, he was even stronger than before. I shot at him with my sand blaster to try and keep him at bay and continued my onslaught whenever I had an opening. I smashed him down with my ancient hammer and showered numerous meteors from the sky above to overwhelm him. The battle was difficult, but I managed to overcome the wolf clan's leader. Woo! 
Woohoo! I used the key to open the treasure chest and suddenly magic enveloped the area. My brother Mordecai appeared in front of me. My wish had come true. Great job, little bro. I knew you could do it. Thanks, big bro. It's so great to have you back. I love you. You're the best. Bronzo!